like to say good afternoon to everyone. We are now calling the Shreveport City Council meeting to order. We ask that if you have your cell phones, would you please put them on silence or turn them off? We're going to ask that Councilwoman Taylor would lead us in prayer. Councilman Nicholson, would you lead us in the pledge? We won't bow their heads. Merciful Father, we come to you today giving you all thanks and praises. Thank you for allowing us to have this opportunity to serve your people. So I ask right now that you would touch every family under the sound of my voice and report. Touch them in their area of need. We pray for protection over all of our first responders and all of those that take care of people within the city. And now lead us and guide us as we conduct this meeting according to your will. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Please place the flag and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Councilwoman Tyler. Present. Councilwoman Fuller. Here. Councilman Nicholson. Present. Councilman Booker. Councilman Jackson. Councilman Blanton. I'm here. And Councilman Baldwin. Here. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the administrative conference meeting Monday, July 25th, 2022, and the city council meeting Tuesday, July 26th, 2022? So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Bowman, second by Councilman. Nicholson, are there any questions? If not, let's vote. Motion carries with five. Thank you. Does any council member have any awards, recognition, or distinguished guests not to exceed 15 minutes? Chairman? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to call it Fiamula Bradley. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to Mayor Perkins, the distinguished council, and to the citizens of Shreveport, Louisiana. One year later, I stand before you on behalf of citizens of Shreveport to say thank you for implementing the smoke-free ordinance. Because of your bold, forward thinking, when Shreveport implemented its ordinance, over one million lives across the state of Louisiana are now protected. Thank you. The citizens of Shreveport, they have not forgotten what you've done. I have a thank you card because you were kind enough to ask me to be your guest. Councilwoman Fuller, would you join me at the podium, please? Okay. And it reads, Shreveport, thank you for keeping your promise. One year ago, you made the health of this community a priority, and today we all have the opportunity to breathe healthier, <coughs> smoke-free air. Thank you, the people of Shreveport, Louisiana, your friends and partners for a healthier Louisiana. And on this card, there are over 200 plus sickness tours of your constituents that want to say thank you. Oh, wow. I didn't see the back. Thank you. Come from Fuller, you have any remarks? Um, um. Um, I'm thrilled that we were able to do it. I went to New Orleans to speak at a national conference with Ms. Bradley um, last month. And I think that for all the heartburn that a lot of people have about how they view this, I think that we've made the right decision for the workers in our community and for the health of our general public. So thank you, thank you again, Ms. Bradley, and to the entire coalition. 
Does any other council member have any awards or recognition? Not to exceed 15 minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll just yes, uh, follow on Councilwoman Fuller's remarks and say to Ms. Bradley and all the others who worked so hard to get this done, uh, including Mayor Perkins, uh, that I am uh, just delighted that we were able to pass this legislation. Uh, I'll just uh, re reiterate as a point of personal privilege that my father uh, was an oncologist for more than 40 years before he retired last fall, and I was so thankful to be able to contribute uh, to an effort that will uh, save untold numbers of our citizens from cancer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Thank you. Mr. Mayor, do you have any awards or recognition of distinguished <coughs> guests not to exceed 15 minutes? I do, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I first want to announce some really big news. Uh, as Senator Cassidy announced earlier today, the city of Shreveport is the recipient of a $22 million federal raise grant. Uh, RAISE stands for Rebuilding America Infrastructure with Sustainability and Equity Grant. Um, we received the largest grant in the state, and it's the first time in city history that we received it. Uh, these funds will be used for critical improvements to our health care corridor. And I really want to thank uh, Mr. De Niro Washington. Yeah, I really want to thank Mr. De Niro. You got to stand up, man. We gotta, he, he led the charge on this. Thank you. I want to thank him for his leadership and his persistence on this. We've been pushing this for years and years, so we finally got across the finish line, and we wouldn't have got there if it wasn't for him. So um, we'll be joining our health care partners for the official announcement in the press conference uh, next Monday. <coughs> no, next Thursday, I'm sorry. I mean, this Thursday, sorry. Uh, I'm also excited to make another announcement. Um, this will be transformational for the future of the city as well uh, and, and Shreveport families. Uh, the mid-year budget amendment will include a $3 million investment into the future of our young people. The Shreveport Early Start Initiative will focus on the zero to three age group. And upon approval by city council today, we will roll out a plan that will give our most valuable asset, our children, access to an early childhood education later this year. Uh, the implications are far reaching and will impact economic <coughs> development for our city uh, and other areas that will be felt for generations to come. Community development will be overseeing the execution of this program, and we will also be partnering with key stakeholders for development of this initiative. Uh, more details will be to follow, but this is gonna be very, very good for our city. Uh, next up, I wanna congratulate the Office of Fair Share and bring up Mr. Leon Wheeler. Uh, Mr. Leon Wheeler, uh, for all his work with the Hoop Don't Shoot Basketball Tournament, and I would also like to bring up um, our tournament champions, Gopher Green and Willa Power Washing uh, for a special presentation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Councilman. It's been a long, grueling three, four weeks putting this uh, tournament together. The idea was, you know, there's, there wasn't a meeting that I went to that our uh, mayor didn't stress public safety. So it kind of rubbed off me, off on me to, you know, think of something outside the box, be creative, and we came up with the idea of getting 16 small businesses out the neighborhood grab some of these young kids off the street, and let's create a basketball tournament. And those 16 teams showed up and showed out. But obviously we, don't, we can only have two today. And we have Mr. Frank Gibson. He had age group 12 through 15, and he won his selective uh, tournament. And uh, we got Miss Kiara Wheeler with Wheeler Power Wash, and she was from 16 through 23, and she won her perspective. Uh, tournament bracket and so I want to congratulate to both individuals for being you know putting up with me for for a whole month <laughs> and very grueling this is one of the hardest things I ever did in my days I've served military and everything else is one of the most hardest thing I put together however it was worked and I do it again at any time and I thank these two individuals for being such distinguished people and loving their community Before I do my presentation, do the, the team GMs want to say anything? Um, excuse me, I want to say anything about, about it. <laughs> I just want to thank y'all for the opportunity. Okay. Basketball is a passion of mine, so 
I'll do it again any day. Yeah. Just so y'all know, she told me she was gonna win the tournament before the championship game. So it's so good to see you again. I see you you came true on your promise. Well, I'll let her go first because usually I'm very long winded. <laughs> but I ain't gonna do that. You know I, I promised that we was gonna win. Yeah. And um I just wanna say uh, look y'all, this is um this is the start of something good. Uh, from community to community, all aspects of backgrounds and this and that, we was able to really touch a lot of lives playing just a couple of weeks of basketball and interacting with these kids. And I personally saw a difference, uh, not only with the kids, but with me. I mean, I, I was exposed to some, um, some situations that I personally don't see every day. So any little thing that we do, uh, I like this this energy that we created uh, with this tournament. I say we build on it and let's see what happens moving forward. All right, so Absolutely. let let's let's Absolutely. continue this. That's my message. Absolutely, that's the plan. Yeah, Mr. Gibson hit me up constantly all the time <laughs> asking what he what more he can do for the city. Right. So thank you for stepping up in a big way. I'm about to present uh, two plaques to our championship teams. Mr. Chairman, will you join? Me? Yes, sir. Uh, next up, uh, council approved the appointment of Ms. Kristen Brown and uh, Ms. Audrius Reed to the Shreveport Implementation and Redevelopment Authority at our last council meeting. Both are here today and available to answer any questions from council. Uh, can we have Ms. Brown and Ms. Reed come up? And Ms. Mayor, as they come, uh, I was notified that we're having streaming problems, so it's not on TV at this point in time. And also there are some more agendas out front. Afternoon. So, Miss, uh, sorry, Miss Brown is not here right now. So, uh, Miss Reed will be answering questions by herself today. Okay. Well, Miss Reed, thank you for agreeing to serve on this board. We appreciate it very much. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. all right. Happy to serve. Yeah, yeah, easy. Nice. <laughs> Just thank you. Thank you for uh, willing to uh, serve. Uh, appreciate you. No problem. Thank you. Happy to serve. All right. Next up, later this month, council will be voting to confirm uh, Mr. Terry Ivey as superintendent of streets and drainage. Uh, he is here today. Uh, Mr. Ivey? Okay. Can we have Mr. Ivey come up? He's here today and available to answer uh, any questions. And as, as y'all know, he will be replacing uh, Jarvis Morgan in that position. We still have Jarvis, but, uh, you know, he got promoted. So, you got some pretty big shoes to fill. So if you have any questions, this is this is the new guy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Mr. Ivey, I called and text Jarvis a whole lot. Okay. That's all I'm gonna say. Yes, I'm ready to serve. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Glad, glad, glad to have you. I'm glad uh, they chose you. I've seen uh, you out in the field a lot. I see you doing a lot of hard work. I just want to say I appreciate you and thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Mr. Ivey, just like to say congratulations and as Councilman Bowman, just check with Jarvis and he'll tell you how long my list is. <laughs> yes, sir. Congratulations and uh, just tell Jarvis to give you our phone numbers. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Ditto. Congratulations. Thank you for serving. Thank you, sir. That's it. That's it. All right. You're good to go. No, All right. Thank you. All right. All right. 
All right. Uh, and uh, last but not least, I want to bring up Ms. Dr. White uh, for any questions. Well, I'm sorry. She's going to be making some updates on monkeypox, and she might want to update us on some more uh, health issues going on in our community. Thank you, Dr. White, for being here. Good afternoon. How are you? How are you doing, Dr. <laughs> so um, they just asked me to come and speak about a little bit about monkeypox, to kind of educate people a little bit about it. I think there's some confusion in the community about monkeypox. <clears throat> monkeypox is a virus that's been around since the early 1970s. It's not new. It's new to this country. Um, this is not a new strain or anything that, like, it's not like COVID where it's a brand new virus and we don't know anything about it. It is acting a little different in this outbreak. So monkeypox is normally endemic in certain countries in Africa and we don't usually see it here we saw an outbreak in the early 2000s when somebody decided that they were gonna um, catch prairie dogs out in Arizona and <laughs> raise them as kind of some special pets and those prairie dogs had monkeypox and luckily we were able to stop the spread so it went from animal to person but it didn't go from person to person so we didn't have a true outbreak this time we've seen kind of, once it goes person to person and it starts spreading if we don't act quickly it can spread from person to person like we're seeing now um, it started uh, in other parts of the world it spread to the u.s it's now in louisiana we have about 88 cases <coughs> Those are primarily in South Louisiana. I will tell you that's probably because they're testing more and people are looking for it more. Um, <clears throat> we know we have a couple of cases here, um, but I imagine we have more. Um, that's not to scare anyone, it's just a fact. You know, once a virus comes into a community, it doesn't stop at parish lines. It doesn't know those boundaries. And so once it's here, it's probably here we need to look for it more and people need to be aware of it more so a lot of people think this is a gay man's disease that it is an std that is transmitted sexually um, through gay or bisexual sex that is not the case so we see we are seeing in this outbreak let me let me take a step back i told you it was not acting in its normal fashion right so normally we have like a flu-like illness, then you get really bad lymph nodes, those nodes that hurt really bad in your neck, and then you get the rash. For this outbreak, it's doing whatever it wants. So some people have that prodrome, some people don't. Some people have the lymphadenopathy, some people don't. Some people have the rash first and then get the other two. And then the rash has been in multiple places that it normally doesn't start. Rash can go anywhere. It usually starts on your face, your trunk, and your extremities. Um, but once, if you get a severe case of it, you can get it in your mouth, you can get it in your eyes, in your ears, your nose, and it can be very painful. With this outbreak, we have seen it on the genitals. So public health taught people who treat STDs to look for monkeypox or consider monkeypox if they see lesions on the genitals. Don't just assume it's herpes or syphilis or chancroid, all of which can make little blisters-like lesions on your genitals. So we put out that information, which made, I think, a lot of people think, oh, it's an STD. It's transmitted by close personal contact, and it's transmitted res by respiratory, but these droplets are really big. They tend to, if we cough them out or sneeze them out, they tend to drop right in front of us because they're so big. So most likely it's going to be coming into contact with those lesions. We also hear about men having sex with men or bisexual men. We are seeing in this outbreak for some reason, which they're not exactly sure why, but it just happened to start in that demographic. It does not stay in that demographic. If you look around the country, around the world, it moves out of that um, demographic into all demographics. So we see it in women, we see it in pregnant women, we see it in children, we've even had it in infants in this country. Good news is, usually it's a pretty mild disease. 
there are some people, especially those who are immunocompromised, that can become really sick with it. They can have encephalitis, they can have sep sepsis, some pretty significant complications, but the mortality rate is really low. So for this whole outbreak, I think about six people around the world have died in this one, in this outbreak that we're seeing right now. Really low mortality rate, that's great news. But we, it is very painful and it can have long-term consequences, you know, rehab from having sepsis and being really sick. That, that's a, a hard thing to go through. Knowing what my husband went through and watching him go through rehab, if you know anybody who's been extremely ill, it's not an easy process. So it's not just a benign thing, but we wanna make sure people realize that anyone can get it. While it is in that demographic primarily right now, in other states it's already spread outside of that demographic. And um, we wanna make sure people watch themselves are, are vigilant for the rash. It can start as pimples, what looks like pimples. Um, usually they'll come like one spot and then you'll see another spot and that's what makes you go, hey, what, what, <laughs> why am I having these, these little spots all over me? And they can also look like ant bites, like chicken pox. <laughs> and sometimes they progress to be large enough to have that kind of raised, kind of squishy edge, rubbery edge with a little divot in the center. Those are those pictures you see a lot of, right? The big lesions and they can be very painful. Most of the people who get hospitalized get hospitalized for pain control because literally just brushing against them, the wind blowing by it can hurt so bad. They've described it as a potato peeler, someone taking a potato peeler to my skin or someone pressing on that lesion with a hot knife. It's, so it can be really painful. It's not something to just ignore and you wanna pay attention because there are vaccines, there's treatment, and we want to make sure that you, if you have a new rash, you cover that rash, wear a mask, and go let a doctor just take a look at it. They'll decide whether you need to be tested, and then we'll guide you what you need to do after that. Does anybody have any questions? Dr. White, are there any preventative measures? So, <clears throat> Really, it's because it's a virus, the good news is people won't spread it unless they have symptoms. And the most likely way to spread it is if you have the lesions. So if you have any rash and you cover it, you're going a long way to protect people. Wearing masks does help protect you um, if you're in close quarters. This virus, unlike COVID, takes prolonged contact with someone for a respiratory spread. So like if you're riding in a car for a long road trip and then you end up finding out, oh, my car mate has monkeypox, we would probably treat you as a close contact just to protect you. Really just being good hand washing, keep your hands off your face, like we say for everything. Stay home if you're sick, avoid people who are <laughs> sick. and. Um, make sure you watch yourself for those signs of that rash. Dr. White, what, what type of antibiotics are they using for this? Are they using any type of antibiotic? So it's not an antibiotic unless you get infect, a secondary infection in the rash, but there is an antiviral um, called T-pox, and that came through the strategic national stockpile just like the vaccine, so the state does have some doses of that, some courses of that, excuse me, in the state, we have some up here. So your doctor would just let us know, hey, he seems to have a severe case or hospitals will let us know when we get that treatment to you. Mr. Chair. And, and I'd just like to say thank you for coming and say hello to Dr. White for me. Oh, I sure yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Sir. Um, is there a site we can go to to keep the updates on status of outbreaks um, or the number of cases in this area? There is. So if you go to the LDH website, which is just ldh.la.gov and backslash monkeypox will bring up everything. It has frequently asked questions. It has the case counts. It has sites where you can get vaccine if you think you're high risk. Um, and um, also links to articles. It has links to the uh, World Health, Health Organization as well as to CDC. 
What's the incubation period? So it usually is about 14 days. Okay. And, but this can last, once you get the rash, can last anywhere from two to four weeks. Okay. Are you contagious the whole time you have the rash? Yeah, well, until they drive, yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. White. Thank you, Dr. White. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good to see you. You're welcome. Have a good day. All right, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought Dr. White was my last guest. I got one more. Yes, uh, one more guest. Uh, the city has a new bank vendor uh, in Chase Bank, and I have Mr. Greg Rattler in the audience. That uh, the council has any questions, can talk to him about it, and he, I have a few words for the council. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Perkins, and. Uh, Chairman Green and members of the City Council and members of the Dice, Greg Rattler, Managing Director of J.P. Morgan Chase, we are excited, ecstatic, in fact, to be chosen through this RFP process to be your fiscal agent bank. Uh, just quickly, J.P. Morgan Chase started in 1799 as a utility company to provide water to Lower Manhattan. We've now grown to uh, 192,000 employees worldwide. We currently bank uh, a significant number of countries, states of course, and many companies, small businesses, and of course households. Uh, here in Louisiana, we started as First National Bank of Shreveport many, 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 many years ago. Then through the acquisition of Bank One, and then in late 1990, the acquisition by J.P. Morgan Chase. I represent uh, a group of individuals that are assigned to manage all of the government relationships in the state of Arkansas and, of course, the state of Louisiana. I'm joined today by a few of my colleagues here from Shreveport. Uh, and our commitment is really simple. We are a global financial services provider with local delivery and execution. It's just that simple. Our goal is to make sure that we're delivering content and tools for your employees as well as efficiency that would be appreciated by your stakeholders, not the least of which, of course, is the taxpaying public. Uh, we had our first kickoff meeting this morning, very successful. Uh, looking forward to serving you as your fiscal agent bank. Uh, we have a lot of resources. My job as the quarterback of the team, to use that analogy, is to make sure I'm bringing all of the players to the table on behalf of the city of Shreveport. We currently employ just under 100 people here in the Bossier. Uh, Cattle Parish area, uh, of course, another thousand over in Monroe because of our Monroe Document Processing Center. But my goal is to make sure that I am available to the city of Shreveport. Uh, we have been very successful in this particular line of business that I manage. It's government 24-7, 365. We don't do anything else but focus on the needs of state and local government. So we're very proud, very happy to be, ha uh, be here having been selected as your fiscal agent bank, and in the interest of time, I'll stand down and, and answer any questions you might have. Mr. Chairman, I'll just once again express my appreciation to the administration for putting this out for an RFP process. We've obviously landed on a, a highly qualified team and bank to service the city, uh, and this, this is the way that uh, third-party service providers should be selected to serve the public. So, sir, thank you for your remarks, and thank you for your service to Shreveport. Mm. Glad to be here. I'd just like to say thank you, and we appreciate you. Look forward to working with you and your team. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my remarks. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, do you have any other communications relative to city business other than the awards and recognition? I do not. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions for property standards for Mr. Green? Seeing there's none. Did everyone receive your revenue collection plan and implementation report, finance? Thank you. Uh, public hearings, there are none. Madam Clerk, will we have any legislation to be added today? None that I'm aware of, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Today we will hear public comments on agenda items only, uh, and you will have three minutes, and the uh, Vice Chair will control the uh, time. First, we have Mr. Craig B. Lee. Craig. 
Craig Lee, 1112 Prospect, Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, I'm here to speak on Ordinance 117, the repeal of Section 1084 of the Code of Ordinances, um, dealing with the physical removal um, of liquor stores. Um, I, I actually have no issue with this ordinance. The issue that I do have is that we have a legitimate African-American business owner who has suffered uh, tremendously based on the impact that the city council has placed on this individual, and that's Bernie Woods, and his legitimate operation on the corner of Kings and Gilbert. Um, I don't think anyone would say that anybody should not be able to sell other items in their stores outside of um, high content alcohol, but at the same time, the type of pressures that you all have placed on Bernie Woods, and he has suffered tremendously, putting in over $100,000 between lawsuit and physical issues that has changed the dynamics of his business, I think that needs to be uh, eradicated. He is the only business that I'm aware of in that industry that now is forced to close at 9 o'clock. So my thing is if the city council can act at rapid speed to eliminate an ordinance that's been in place to now take care of a few individuals who now business is about to suffer if this ordinance does not pass, I think consideration needs to be made to Mr. Bernie Woods because it was very unethical and unjust as to how this council treated um, this individual who had followed all of the rules and requirements um, to make things happen the way that they need to happen. And lastly, I'm also in favor of the TIF uh, ordinance for Councilman Green's district over in District F. And want to welcome you guys out in the morning at 7.30 as we get ready to kick off our second year with dads on duty at Southwood High School. Thank you guys very much. Mr. John Settle. John Settle for Tealwood. You have many ordinances uh, dealing with alcohol on your agenda for first reading today, and I realize that you can't um, answer questions uh, from speakers. But one question that I have in my review deals with Ordinance 115, and that um, ordinance, if passed, would back up the time period to file for a renewal license. Right now it's 30 days, and this says you have to, if you apply before 60 days, it's automatically renewed. I have no problem backing it up, but I just wonder what happens to the people in the gap if, if this is adopted, in other words, if somebody normally had 30 days, uh, at least a 30-day deadline, and you adopt this, and he's at, at and now he's past that. So that's something I hope that when there's more dialogue on this, that you, Ordinance 115, there'll be some discussion on how to maybe grandfather those in or something like that. Thank you. Yeah, Sam Mears. Sammy Mears, 1901 Centenary Boulevard, Apartment M110, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71101. Today I'm speaking on Resolution 9103. This is a great idea, and I say do this and go for it, authorizing whatever use of the certain equipment that there is by the North Shreveport Business Association that's absolutely necessary. This is a great idea. Also on 9104, this is a great idea to donation for, of surplus property, motorized vehicles of the city, city of Shreveport Police Department, which are not needed for a public purpose, and do that too. I think these are two good resolutions, and I say vote yes on both of these today. Thank you. The Bernie Wood. Good afternoon, City Council. 
Bernie Woods, 3001 Curtis Lane, Shreveport, Louisiana, and I'm here to speak in opposition to uh, allowing the uh, separation on the alcohol agenda. Uh, my reason for uh, opposition to that, I want to thank Mr. Craig Lee for speaking on my behalf. I didn't lobby him to do that. But my opposition is smaller liquor stores will be absolutely impacted if you, in fact, repeal this ordinance where there is no separation. It opens the door for many big chain stores that might get liquor, and if they do, it will tend to drive smaller liquor stores like myself out of business. Mr. Craig Lee is right. I fought long and hard, as this council knows, to open my second store, and that was by me going by every single ordinance that the city council said that I had to have. This ordinance is old and been on the books for a minute. I hear, well, it's old and archaic. Well, I, I think the fact that it's old and archaic is no reason to repeal it. The Constitution is old and archaic, but <laughs> that doesn't mean it's not a good uh, ordinance to have around. The, the separation uh, also, if you take away from it, what do you do about allowing kids, high, all these kids, to have more access to liquor? I thought the city of Shreveport uh, put a moratorium on the liquor uh, license because there's too many. This will only, only, it could only give the opportunity for more liquor stores to open. Brookshire's. Walgreens, all of these stores are much larger stores, and with their ability to buy in volume and bulk, all of the small independent liquor stores like myself will, 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 will have a hard time surviving. So if, if you're saying that there are some stores that are out of uh, the ordinance and, 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 and not in compliance, well, that's a simple fix just sell liquor and get rid of the rest of the stuff or sell the rest of the stuff and get rid of the liquor. It's not a hard fix to fix. Um, I, I, I only sell liquor and that's what I applied for. I didn't apply to be a convenience store nor a grocery store. And if there are convenience stores and grocery stores, you ought to say you should have had a separate entrance. How they got away with that, I don't know, but it's simple. Not put anybody out of business. They simply either go by the ordinance, just don't sell liquor, or just don't sell the convenience items and the groceries. It's not a hard fix. Thank you. Thank you. I had, uh, I don't know if Mr. Leo Stevenson speaking today. Good evening. Hey, good evening. My name is Leo Stevenson, District Vice President for Brookshire's Grocery Company. Before I get started, Bernie is my friend. I, I, I do oppose uh, what he says, but uh, I do support repealing uh, the liquor ordinance. Um, and I'll say I've been with the company 25 years, uh, and I know some of you probably thinking, like, I don't look 25, probably 21, right? Uh, so, so look, you know, I, I've been lobbying for this for a very long time to remove this separate entrance, right? Um, if you think about it, Shreveport is the only city in Louisiana with this law. Shreveport is the only city in Louisiana with this law, and it, it doesn't make sense, right? Uh, if you think about the blue laws, you know, and you could probably recall with the blue laws, that liquor, you know, you, you can sell liquor on Sunday. And we kind of move past the blue laws, and it's time for us to move away from this archaic um, ordinance. So, you know, and obviously the argument is to keep the liquor out the kids' hands and protect small businesses. But in return, the reverse is, has happened, right? We got more liquor stores on, on corners. We got more liquor stores in our communities. And it has not reduced the crime. So, you know, one of our core values is do the right thing 
the right way. And so I hope that Shreveport do the right thing the right way and repeal this ordinance. Thank you. Hey, thank you for coming. Let me, let me, it's nice to see you. Um, you know, I, I'm often carded when I buy a bottle of wine at Brookshire's and I know I don't look 21. So, uh, I, you know, fr from, from personal experience, I really don't have any concern that Brookshire's or other grocery stores are going to sell to minors. I just, I don't see that happening. Could you talk about the controls you have in place to ensure that doesn't happen? And, and, and has that been a problem in your 25 years at Brookshire's? So, so great question, Councilman. So, you know, 25 years again, like those are still liquor is not the kids. It's our lovely Shreveport citizens that are still in liquor and still in steaks, deodorant, toothpaste, anything they can get their hands on. But kids are still in candy chip. They're not still in liquor. So the argument of kids going on the ship still in liquor is is absent, really. So. Uh, but really, I just think we just need to move past this archaic ordinance and let's get rid of the wall. And, and every store should be able to sell liquor without the uh, separate entrance. Uh, you know, really, again, Shreveport is a progressive city. We got Amazon coming, we got two new Brookshire stores coming. Like, really, we just need to continue to be progressive. And if we're going to continue to be progressive, we got to get rid of some of our old, old mindsets. So, thank you. Uh, Brandis Latin. Good afternoon, Brandis Latin. Um, 2500 sitting there Boulevard, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71104. Um, I am the owner of Brand Realty Properties, and I'm here for case 22-9-BAC. Um, I did listen to Mr. Westmoreland's comments at the last meeting, and he stated that we would be in a violation of the covenants of the HOA by using the property as a short-term rental. Um, that is actually not true. I'm not sure if the projector is on or not, but um, the Texas Supreme Court, Arkansas Supreme Court, and um, Alabama Supreme Court have all ruled that short-term rentals are still considered residential use and purposes. Um, basically, the, the reason that they cite it <laughs> is because short-term renters engage in the same activities as uh, long-term renters. Um, also, Mr. Westmoreland is using the case um, Edward versus Landry Chalette um, to defend his case. Um, but the HOA, the covenants of that HOA in that community are different than the covenants of the Centenary HOA. Um, the main purpose of that case, they were debating um, a commercial use clause that they had in their um, HOA. Although what we're doing is not commercial use, that was the whole argument of that case. They weren't debating the residential uses. Um, I would also like to draw to the city's attention that it doesn't seem that the HOA of Centenary is abiding <coughs> by their own laws, um, bylaws as well as covenants. Uh, for example, Ms. Sandra Charles, who seems to be spearheading this, doesn't actually own any of the townhomes in that area. She has also hired a lawyer without um, notifying the residents of that area and using the HOA funds to um, pay that lawyer. Um, also, Mr. Charles Gray, who at the July 12th meeting stated that he was the secretary, he owes thousands of dollars in HOA back dues. Therefore, per the bylaws, his voting is supposed to be suspended until he's in good standing with the HOA. Um, also, I think um, if we really look at the covenants of Centenary's HOA, it says, that, it says that no lot shall be used except for residential purposes. They don't use the word use. Um, I think we would be remiss not to look at the difference between the word purpose and use. Uh, for example, a cell phone has many uses, text, email, play games, but no one plays, buys a cell phones explicitly to play games. Cell phones are used for the purpose of communication. It's the same with property. Whether someone rents my property for two days, two years, two months, they are still using it because they need shelter, and that is the purpose of property. Thank you for your time. I hope that the city, city allows us to get this permit because we are not in, um, we are not violating the HOA covenants of Centenary. Thank you. It's Ivy Woodard. What you had just Ivy Woodard? That was a joke because she sounds so much like her mother. 
Good afternoon, Ivy Woodard, uh, 6230 South Inwood Road, Report, Louisiana, 71119. I'm also here to speak on case number 229 um, for Brand Realty. Um, we understand that uh, short-term rental property is allowed for uh, uh, within the city of Shreveport, according to your Unified Development Code, uh, this, this property is listed as an R2. And um, if you get your code and look under 23.3, it lists townhouses as well. Um, I understand that some of the residents there um, may have been um, a little concerned about parties uh, Airbnb um, have banned parties, so this property won't be used for parties at all. Um, right now, as I stated um, a couple of weeks ago, we have two um, medical students that are in an Airbnb that we own on, on Montego uh, Lane. Um, and basically, um, that's pretty much our target audience. Um, if our overhead was working today. But anyway, um, through Airbnb, we've had um, several people to um, rent our other property, and, and, and we've done that with no problems whatsoever. Um, we've been able to turn down people who look like they might want a party because we're not interested in anybody who is trying to rent the property for any other reason other than to live there. And mainly when people come to Shreveport, now you know we're not uh, the spring break kind of town, so there aren't very many parties. When we rent our property, the property is rented for people who want to come here, live, take care of their business, and then they move on. And that's our reason. Um, anybody have any questions before I sit down? I actually had a, a question. I think that you might have been sent the email, Ms. Woodard. Um, there was a homeowners association meeting, mm -hmm. and you brought it to our attention by email that you and, and Brandis were not invited to that. Is that correct? That is correct. I believe they put a notice in the in the um, in the little mailbox, but there was no real notification of that meeting. And of course, the meeting was held the evening prior to the last city council meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. You'll be here for the end when we deliberate on this? I'm sorry? Y'all will stay for the whole meeting when oh, we yeah. deliberate on this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, we also um, uh, uh, held another meeting, um, I believe Because you was. sent a, a Zoom link, right? Yeah, through Zoom. And we had maybe about two other people that um, attended that particular meeting. We're willing to work with the neighborhood and basically what we're willing to do is to improve the property, rather than bring the property down. And I believe that um, if we had some more um, Airbnb rental properties in some of these other neighborhoods, I believe um, that alone would try to bring these neighborhoods up. And right now, the property that we've, we've bought at Centenary, we have improved that property and I'm pretty sure if we sold it today, we would probably get almost double for what we paid for it for. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Linda McGee. Did I say your name correctly? McGeehee, but I'm used okay. to it being Want pronounced sure. wrong, Thank so you. that's okay. There, I'm an owner, but I do not live at the Centenary property, and I've had the property at least 25, maybe 30 years. It's close to Centenary. I understand Airbnb, and I see no reason why the property shouldn't be used as an Airbnb. Um, I don't understand the conflict other than some of the other owners may not understand what Airbnb is actually about. So um, <clears throat> I'm here for support to for the Airbnb, and maybe we need to to 
upgrade some of our rules and regulations around there or get up to standard but I believe that it would be a good asset to the community to have um, those properties used as our B&Bs thank you thank you and Jeff Westmoreland good afternoon members of the council Jeff Westmoreland 330 Marshall Street Suite 1000, uh, Wiener Weiss and Madison. Uh, I represent uh, Centenary Commons HOA. I was here at the uh, admin meeting last, um, speaking on case 22-9-BAC, the appeal by Centenary Commons HOA. Uh, let's just dispel some of this misinformation. I'm properly hired by the board of the HOA. The board of the HOA runs that corporation. They make the decisions for the corporation and they've hired me to address this issue. Airbnb and VRBO use is not a benefit to most communities. I represent over 30 HOAs in Shreveport and Bossier and we're having a rash of problems with this in various HOAs because in almost every instance, uh, while there may be some good renters, there are plenty of not good renters. Uh, and when you're in a townhouse situation, you share common walls. And if you get a bad renter for a weekend or three or four days, you are going to hear them every day and every night for that entire period of time. This is not a residential purpose. This is turning a property into a lodging quarters, temporary lodging quarters to be used more like a hotel. This is not like a long-term rental. It also says in the covenants that have been on record since 1980 that it's to be used as a single family dwelling. A dwelling is where somebody resides on a permanent or semi-permanent basis. You would not call a hotel room a dwelling. If you rent this place for two or three days, that's not a dwelling. I appreciate uh, the applicants citing case law from other states, but that does not apply to us. The case that I have cited, the Edwards case, is the controlling law in our district right now. It's a Second Circuit case, writs denied by the Louisiana Supreme Court. There are no other cases uh, that address this in our district. And that court found that occupants in the property on a transient basis only are not utilizing the property for a residential purpose. The language, there was some differing language, yes, but the main language was for residential purpose. Uh, your UDC also says that you have to uh, take into account covenants for these properties when looking at these short-term rentals and that the short-term rentals will not become a nuisance or threaten the public health, safety, or welfare of neighboring properties. There are plenty of properties in this district that are, are not in HOAs and don't have covenants. Those, those properties are great for this type of short-term rental, but covenants are there They've been enforced. They've been in place since 1980. I think it's important to note that, that this is a precedent that the council is setting on these issues. And I think if there are distinct, there, there are problems between the parties, those can be worked out in a court of law. But when you're, when you're ruling on this, these issues, and, and they're going to be many as they come forward because there are a lot of HOAs, I think you have to think about the precedent that you're setting. Are you going to respect the covenants that are on record? or are you going to just act like they don't exist and move forward and grant the use? So we're opposed to the use. The HOA board and the people it represents are opposed to the use. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Westmoreland, is the Second Circuit's decision in Edwards fairly characterized as being directly on point? I think it does. I mean, it, it talks about, you know, there is a provision in there that talks about commercial use, but the holding at the end of the case says what I just said, the occupants are in the property on a transient basis only and not utilizing the property for, pur for residential purposes. That's the court's <coughs> holding. The key term doesn't fall on commercial use as the applicant says, it falls on the use as a residential purpose. Also, do you own your home in an LLC? Do I own my home in an LLC? No. Why is it in an LLC? Because it's a business. It is there for a business purpose and the LLC owns the property. 
Why would you put it in an LLC if you weren't going to A, run a business, and B, seek to avoid liability? I also want to point out uh, the applicant was nice enough to provide the emails, um, some of the emails they got, but here's a perfect example. What kind of stuff can't we do? I want to book you for prom. Now, she goes forward and says, you can't do this, you can't do that, and maybe we aren't suitable for what you're looking for. But one of the statements she says is, should any of these things occur, parties, loud music, an extra fee will be extracted. Well, that doesn't help the neighbors who deal with the problem of the next door neighbor. Is there a mechanism by which the owners of these townhomes can amend the covenants if they decide they want to have Airbnb? Yes. Amendment of covenants is never really an easy process, uh, and I deal with them in HOAs all the time. And the reason being is the covenants are the stability for the property, and so you don't want them amended every month or two months. But in this case, um, it would require agreement of 75% of the owners. Now, there's only 16 owners here, so that's doable. If they decide that they want to amend the covenants on this issue, uh, you could, you could, when you're in an HOA that has 300 members, that's difficult. But in this instance, you could, you could amend the covenants if you got the, the requisite votes. So at this point, after it's been more than 20 years, the, the requirement to amend goes down to 75%. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, I did have one more. Um, I'm sorry. Mr. Brent Latin. Good afternoon, Council Brent Ladden, 10573 Public Appointment Drive, Keithville, Louisiana, 71047. I want to thank Mr. Moreland for his comments. Uh, just to let you all know, and of course you see me twice or once on this on this issue, nearly uh, almost half of the properties there are commercially owned LLC. So I think we want to dispel that saying that this is just a business. It is a business, but there are also other businesses operating there. Uh, as of right now. Uh, something else that has really disturbed us in our findings and investigation, the HOA there is really in discourse. Uh, leadership at this point doesn't even know, uh, or former leadership doesn't know that there's new leadership. Uh, so I think that's something that if this doesn't get passed, that needs to really be looked at for this specific HOA to really discover who's in leadership. Um, as we've been investigating the Former president didn't even know he was the former president. I think if um, I think if Pastor Green found out that he wasn't the chairman, but didn't find it out here, I think that would be an issue. So that really needs to be uh, investigated. Uh, something else that uh, my brother here from Brooks just alluded to earlier was progressiveness, um, and young people definitely look for that. Uh, we also saw in the 2030 master plan for the city, which I read that years ago because I'm a Shreveport buff. But the city is looking to do a lot of things in the Highland area, and one of those things is to make sure that there is mixed use in Highland for the future. So we're, we're in 2022. Uh, we talked about setting precedences um, for later on. This can definitely be something that is a positive impact if, uh, if passed uh, this time. Let's see what else do we have. Other than that, I think that we've pretty much spoken um, about about the legitimacy of the HOA and the leadership, and even if the people that are putting up the lawsuit, if they're even able to make a decision in the HOA. If you hadn't paid fees in years or the HOA is in discourse, I don't think this would be the best time to say that the HOA collectively has hired a lawyer when half of the people that have been in leadership for the HOA don't even know what's going on. So I think that th that really needs to be uh, looked at as well. But like I said before, we want to progress the city's 2022, 2030 master plan, looking to use Highland for mixed use. So this is a good continuation of those efforts. Any, I'm sorry, I, I forgot last time I asked it first. Any questions? I Mr. love Chairman, questions. I've got 45 seconds. Um, you mentioned majority of the properties are in LLC, over half? Well, no, just, just under half. Uh, six out of those 16, I believe, six or seven, are, um, are owned by LLCs. And most of the people that own them don't live there. They have them either for, uh, they, they have them for rental properties. Yeah, that was my next question. Which, what percentage are rentals versus um, the homeowners are actually living in the properties? You know, that's a good question. I do not know that, but I believe from looking at uh, one of the emails that it's over half that it's rental properties. Most of the people in that area don't own the property uh, that they're living in there. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Are there any other short-term rentals being operated at this site? 
No, there aren't any, uh, as far as Airbnb or, or VRBOs, there aren't any that way. But as, as we know, and I know it was alluded to about renters, I don't care what neighborhood you're in, you can be in, in Spring Lake, Southern Trace, you can be anywhere. You can have a bad renter, or un, un, let's be honest, you can have a bad neighbor. <laughs> I'm pretty sure people in the audience or people up here, they've had a bad neighbor. So I think that that is really, you know, arbitrary to the situation. I mean, that's, you know, that can happen either way with a neighbor or a renter, short term, long term. To be honest with you, I think most people would want a bad short term uh, neighbor than a long term, <laughs> if I'm, I think, I think so. so. Oh, so the, to answer that question, any other questions? This the, the, I don't have a question, it's just a comment. The reason that this is in front of us is the appeal of the ZBA right. special use. The special use was only up because there is another Airbnb within X amount of feet of this one. If that one didn't exist across the street, this would be a use by right. They just have to fill out the permit and then it would be a done deal. And if there were issues with the homeowners association, that would be happening in court, not here. It wouldn't have ever even been a thing. Right, thank y'all so much. That's it, Chair. Thank you. We have no uh, executive appointments to be considered today. Uh, there are no items on the uh, consent agenda for introduction or to be adopted. Madam Clerk, would you proceed with regular agenda legislation? Resolution 103, authorizing the use of certain equipment by the North Report Business Association. So moved. Moved by Councilwoman Taylor, second by Councilman Bowman. <coughs> Any questions? If not, let's vote. Motion carried with six and one absent. Resolution 104, authorizing the donation of surplus property, specifically motorized vehicles of the Shreveport Police Department, which are not needed for a public purpose, to a political subdivision. So moved. Moved by Councilwoman Taylor. Second. Second by Councilman Bowman and Nicholson. Are there any questions? If not, let's vote. Motion carries with six and one else. Resolution 105, authorizing the mayor to execute a banking services agreement with J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. So moved. Moved by Councilman Bowman, second, second by Councilman Nicholson. Are there any questions? If not, let's vote. Motion carried with five, one out of chamber, one absent. Resolution 106, urging and requesting Southwestern Electric Power Company, American Electric Power Company, Inc., and Panola Harrison Electric Cooperative to establish a moratorium on disconnection or shutoff of utility service to individuals. Moved by Councilman Jackson, second by the chair. Are there any questions? Question. Uh, question. Uh, Councilman Bowen. You go ahead. Yeah. My question becomes with the moratorium. If, if this is in place, is this going to the Public Service Commission? Where would the resolution be heading to? Um, since we don't regulate public utilities and that's normally done by the, it's done by the Public Service Commission, my concern then becomes what steps will be taken to protect um, those citizens after the moratorium is over once it passes. Councilwoman Fuller, I mean, Taylor, excuse me. Yeah, um, that is the plan um, to uh, extend more time to where we can work with other resources that we do have them coming in to make sure that the bill does get paid. Um, we want to make sure that's what code um, becomes whole, stay whole. We just don't want any disconnection during this critical period. And then after the fact, um, we want to communicate with them so they don't continue to dig a, a deeper and bigger hole. Um, but from my knowledge, most people aren't communicating with SWEPCO um, due to 
bad past experience. So we want to give time to let them know that Swepco is here to help. This connection is, is not the goal. Um, and we do want to provide more time so they can um, get caught up with the increased bill. Um, so that is the goal. Thank you. Yes. I think my question was along the lines of what uh, Councilwoman Taylor was asking. Um, so this, what this, I mean, this is going to the public service commission. Is, is what you're saying? That's on the path that he's doing. Yes. Okay. And the action that we're doing is just. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. All right. Any other questions? If not, let's vote. Motion carries with four, one against, one out of chamber, one absent. Madam Clerk, would you proceed with the introduction of resolutions not to be adopted prior to August 23rd, 2022? Resolution 107, authorizing the submission of the 2022 Annual Action Plan to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. And Resolution 108, stating the City of Shreveport's approval of Amendment Number 5 to the Trust Indenture of the Shreveport Home Mortgage Authority. So Is there a motion to introduce these resolutions? So moved. moved by Councilwoman Taylor, second, second by Councilman Bowman. Hmm. Are there any questions on these items? If not, Madam Clerk, would you proceed with the introduction of ordinance on second, uh, not to be adopted prior to August 23rd, 2022? Ordinance 111, amending the 2022 Water and Sewerage Enterprise Fund Budget. Ordinance 112, amending the 2022 General Fund Budget. Ordinance 113, to amend Section 10-4 of the Code of Ordinances relative to reports by the Chief of Police and to include language concerning the powers of the Chief of Police to make rules and regulations. Ordinance 114, to add language to Section 10-8 relative to Class A and Class B permits. Resolu or Ordinance 115, to add language to Section 10-52 which concerns the term and renewal of retail and manufacturer permits. Ordinance 116 to amend section 10-67, which concerns the issuance or denial of alcohol beverage handling employee cards to include language concerning the transfer or surrender of permits upon change of ownership or termination of business. Ordinance 172, one, I'm sorry, Ordinance 117 to repeal Section 10-84 of the City of Shreveport Code of Ordinances. Ordinance 118 to amend Section 10-103 of the Code of Ordinances concerning grounds for suspension or revocation of alcohol beverage permits to include language concerning the emergency closure of an establishment by law enforcement. Ordinance 119 to amend Section 10-133 concerning the hearing and notice for the appeals process for all permits denied, suspended, or revoked. Ordinance 120 to amend section 10-186 concerning the security requirements of digital camera systems. And ordinance 121 to amend various articles and sections in the City of Shreveport, Louisiana Unified Development Code for the purpose of revising the buffer requirements for short-term rental properties. Thank you. Is there a motion to introduce these ordinances? So moved. Moved by Councilwoman Taylor, second by Councilman Bowman. Are there any questions? These ordinances have been introduced. Madam Clerk, would you pre proceed to be, uh, with the ordinance on second reading and final passage? Ordinance 100, amending the City of Shreveport, Louisiana 2022 Capital Projects Fund budget, appropriating the funds authorized herein. So moved. Moved by Councilwoman Taylor, second by the Chair. Are there any questions? If not, please vote. Sorry. Motion carried with six. One else. Ordinance 101, amending the 2022 Capital Improvements Fund budget. So moved. Moved by Councilwoman Taylor, second by the chair. Are there any questions? If not, let's vote. Motion carries with six and one absent. Ordinance 102, amending the 2022 Airport Enterprise Fund budget. So moved by the chair. Second. Second by Councilman Taylor. Are there any questions? 
If not, let's vote. Motion carries with six and one absent. Ordinance 104, amending the 2022 general fund budget. Moved by the chair. Mr. Chairman. The uh, second by, is there a second so we can put it on the floor? Councilman Jackson. Second by Councilman Jackson. Question. Mr. Chairman, on yes, this particular piece of legislation, I've been working with the city attorney's office. I've also spoken to uh, Marshall Jefferson uh, regarding this piece of legislation. Uh, it's probably going to have to be amended. Uh, and I'm not certain if council is fully aware of what this legislation is. I'm sure you want to, you uh, I was suggesting we postpone? I was going to ask this. Postpone. Okay. Motion by. Uh, Reconsideration by right, the substitute motion to postpone. Substitute motion to postpone by Councilman Bowman. Yeah. Second. Second by Councilman Nicholson. Are there any questions? And I wanted the just public knowledge. Just uh, when reading this, it seems as if it was supposed to uh, be something that's coming from the state. But the way that I read it, and I could be wrong, it seems as if it was for us to, for the for the for the council to. Uh, out of the general fund budget and that the money just was not coming the way out it's the right written place. it appears that it's coming from general fund these dollars are actually discretionary dollars from the marshal's office right and so the way uh the state legislation reads is is that the marshal can get an increase in salary up to 50 percent of what the city authorizes but it has to come out of their discretionary funds and uh, the way it's set up now it appears that it's out of general funds so we just need to clear that language up to make sure in the future it shows that it's coming out of discretionary funds and we hadn't been able to get all that language uh, written up yet yes, sir. any uh, questions if not let's vote for the postponement Motion carries with six and one up. One else. Ordinance 105, amending the 2022 general fund budget. Moved by the chair. 105. Yes, sir. Second. Second by Councilman Bowman. Are there any questions? If not, let's vote. Motion carries with six and one else. Ordinance 106, amending the 2022 general fund budget. So moved. Moved second. by Councilman Bowman, second by Councilwoman Taylor. Are there any questions? If not, let's vote. <laughs> Me. Motion carries with six and one absent. Ordinance 107, providing for issuance, sale, and delivery of taxable and tax exempt general obligation refunding bonds, series 2022 by the city of Shreveport, state of Louisiana, prescribing the form, terms, and conditions of such bonds and providing for the payment thereof. And there is one amendment. Uh, amendment one deletes the original proposed ordinance 107 of 2022 fact sheet and resolution and substitutes the attached amendment number one to ordinance number 107 of 2022. And this amendment articulates the dollar amount of the pricing of the bonds. So moved on the amendment. Motion by Councilwoman Taylor on the amendment, second by Councilman Bowman. Are there any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Whitehorn, the interest rate environment is rapidly changing. Is the administration satisfied that this refinancing uh, will confer a, a benefit on the city? Yes, sir. We're comfortable with it. I have Mr. Namney here as well that can speak to any concerns that you I'd, may have. I'd like to hear from him. Thank you. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Namdi Thompson with Government Consultants, Government Consultants serving as Municipal Advisor for this transaction. As you mentioned, yes, the rates are rising, and so we were able to lock in. We were, this was done as a private placement. We worked with a number of different banks to be able to lock in these rates, and since this was somewhat of a complex transaction, 
we're able to get them to lock in the taxable and tax exempt rates to affect a uh, refinancing for the city saved approximately two point four million dollars. Net. You, net net of all expenses that transaction saving more than two million? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Dante, did you want to have something to say? All right. Thank you. Are there any questions other questions? If not, let's vote. On Move the to amendment. It. On the amendment. Yes, sir. Is there a motion in the second? I'm sorry to hear. Yeah, yeah. So moved. Yeah. It's moved by council and taken second by council. Motion carries with six and one absent. Motion on the ordinance by motion on the amendment uh, on the ordinance is amended by the chair. Second. Second by Councilman Bowden. Are there any questions? If not let's vote. Motion carried with six. One else. Ordinance 108 to revise Chapter 78, Article 5, Standards for Construction of Parking Lots of the City of Shreveport, Louisiana Code of Ordinances, relative to construction of parking lots. Will the postpone? Yes. Motion, Motion by Councilman Mateo to postpone. Second by Councilman Bowman. Are there any questions? I did have a question, but I can speak to you about this outline. Okay. Are there any other questions? What, I know it's being postponed, but what generally would this legislation do if adopted? Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, yes, on, on this particular legislation, we're trying to uh, redo uh, what is required as far as the surface material for truck parking, and uh, we plan to include gravel, crushed stone, uh, crushed concrete, uh, and shaved. Uh, asphalt uh, as approved products but it have to be certified through an engineer and uh, designed by an engineer but it, it won't change what's required to park in front of businesses in town or, or it will it, it will change some of it uh, as far as truck parking only okay but but not car parking like in front of a restaurant no, sir. okay no, sir. thank you any other questions? This item has been asked to be postponed. With no other questions, let's vote. Motion carries with six. One absent. Ordinance 109 to amend various articles and sections in the City of Shreveport, Louisiana, Unified Development Code for the purpose of updating and revising the regulations for political signs. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion to open discussion. Motion by uh, Councilman Nicholson, second by the chair. Okay. Any questions? Questions. Okay. Can we have an explanation of this legislation from the appropriate person? Mr. Clark or someone from the MPC. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, as, you, as you well know, this legislation only uh, addresses the unconstitutionality of our current ordinance dealing with political signs and content neutral as opposed to content based signage. Uh, we were at the American Planning Association conference uh, uh, earlier this year, and we found that cities were being required uh, to prevent being sued to make these adjustments to uh, their ordinances. This has nothing to do with the size of signs. This has nothing to do with where signs can be placed. This has nothing to do with our ability to uh, file charges for misplacement of signs, uh, any of those things. All it does is make our ordinance uh, conform to the, uh, we have a Supreme Court case about six years ago a read versus the town of Gilbert, and that's when this was determined that uh, signs that you, the, we, we found that the political signs did not deal, that dealt strictly with content, and because they dealt with content and it requires reading them to understand, that uh, 
they were unconstitutional. So we have removed political signs from the ordinance. And we have like uh, one event, a uh, yard signs, a temporary signs. And that's all that this does. So the, the, the short of it is that we, uh, we can't have one set of rules for political signs right. and another set of rules for other temporary signs because that's unconstitutional. Right. And this fixes that. This fixes that and I, I appeal to you to, uh, because we kind of had this going for a while, I appeal to you to enact this today so that we can come into compliance with U.S. Supreme Court law. Thank you, Mr. Corbin. Just think, are there any questions? questions? Yes, sir. I think it's just some confusion, on, on, and I'm still confused. I know what he said is not. Um, what it doesn't do, I just got some calls about it, and I, I looked at it briefly, and I tried to read over it over and over, and I still didn't understand. And especially, it just seemed like a bad timing, especially right now for doing political season. Some people feel as if this is something political. And, and I, I, I'm sh Getting what you're saying that it's, it's not, it's, it's to actually just help us be conformed, but it just seems like the timing is just off to me. Well, I mean, we, we, we have to address unconstitutionality when it's brought to our attention that we need to address it. Uh, we didn't just start addressing it because we're in a political season. Uh, we just, uh, we found out that our law was unconstitutional, and uh, I think it, does not speak well of the city of Shreveport if we prevent changing an, an unconstitutional law to make it constitutional. Yes. And Ms. Clark, as I said to you last week, uh, I mean the week before, that I'm in full support of it, but not just right now. As soon as the election season is over, then you have my full support. But today I'm a no. Thank you. And I understand. I'm, I'm just sharing with you that. Yes, uh, sir. It has nothing to do with the election. Yes, sir. It only it has to do with a sign regulation that affects political signs. Yes, sir. As my grandmama would say, my vote would have nothing to do with rice and rush, but today it's no. So basically it's just saying that all temporary signs are the same. Yes. There's no longer a such thing as a political sign. Right. They all get treated the same, but they all the, get same the same regulations. And they're all for specific reasons. But uh, because of, of, of cases, and the attorneys probably could uh, explain this much more in depth than I can, but because of cases that went all the way to the Supreme Court, uh, we needed to remove political signs and just call them temporary signs and yard Mr. signs Chair. and one event signs. Yes, sir. Mr. Clark, what makes a sign a temporary sign? It's just there for a limited period of time. I'm like political signs are just there doing the election. Once the initial primary is over, if a candidate is not continuing uh, to an, an additional primary uh, election, then that sign needs to be removed because that event is over. You do realize we still have mayor signs from four years ago that are still posted. I realize that. Uh, uh, and uh, we are working to uh, get all of these signs removed. Unfortunately, the people that lead in government sometimes don't obey the laws that are part of government. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, th this is a, a bit of constitutional housekeeping that needs to happen, but I, I gather that it's the sense of the council it shouldn't happen today, so I'll make a substitute motion to postpone this legislation until the uh, first meeting in December. Second. Moved by uh, Councilman Nicholson, second by the chair, that this would be postponed until the second meeting in December. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair. Are there any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. if you would like to table it until then, uh, then it won't be read every time into the record. Well, uh, I'd rather just postpone it. You just want to postpone it? Leave postpone it right there. I keep it on our minds. All right. Are there any other questions? Motion on the floor is to postpone. If nothing else, let's vote. Who was the second? Motion carries with six. 
one else. Ordinance 110, case number 22-122-C, an ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the city of Shreveport, unified development code by rezoning property located southeast corner of East Kings Highway and East 70th Street, Shreveport, Caddo Parish, Louisiana, from RA Rural Agricultural Zoning District to C4 Heavy Commercial Zoning District. Motion to postpone. Second. Motion by the chair, second by Councilman Nicholson to postpone. Are there any questions? If not, let's vote. Motion carries with six and one absent. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there any table legislation to be removed today from the table? Chairman? Yes. I'd like to remove Ordinance 85 from the table and withdraw. Ordinance 85. Second. Yes. Motion by Councilwoman Fuller, second by Councilman Nicholson to remove Ordinance 85 from the table. Are there any questions, comments? If not, let's vote. Motion carries with six. One else. Thank you. Um, At this time, before we go any further, I'd just like to, uh, for you all to indulge with the sweet, bitter occasion that's happening today. This will be uh, our clerk, uh, Ms. Danielle's last council meeting, and I just think that with the job that she has done, that we ought to recognize her for that and let her have some words because she's going to one of those big time jobs and uh, <laughs> I just think that we needed to stop right here if it's okay with you all and let her have some words before we move to the next item. Well, you and we'd like to give you a big hand. A little warning would have been nice, but uh, <laughs> I just want to thank you all for this opportunity. I, I've really enjoyed working with all of you and the staff. Um, I'm close to six years with the city, and while I'm not a native here, I have a lot of passion for the city and serving the city in three different roles over six years. Um, but, you know, I have, have a young son at home, and I have an opportunity uh, to have a little bit more time with him and spend some more time while he's young. and. So I'm going to go do that for a little while, but thank you all again for your faith in me and everything through this time. So. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And Danielle, one last thing. Let them know, let them know that I've been a good chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked with all kinds of great chairs, <laughs> all of you. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, we have no property standards ABO appeal to consider today. We have uh, appeal case number 22-9 BAC to consider today. So the only thing we have to do is just up or down. Do we need to hear anything else today? No. We need, mo we need to get a motion. Um, I'll, I'd like to make a motion to affirm the ruling of the ZBA. But I think we should discuss it. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Fuller. Second by Councilwoman Taylor. Um, we have the will now for any questions or comments at this particular time? I'll say this. I started off really feeling empathy for the residents. They didn't want the change. They felt like they weren't heard at the ZBA. That's why they moved forward with the appeal. Um, I spoke with individuals directly that were kind of upset about it and were telling me that the vast majority of the people that live there didn't want this to happen. But then I heard separately from other residents that are property owners or people that were, at, were, were landlords that were voting members of the HOA as landlords that they were fine with it. And then we started getting the emails back in from Ms. Latin and her family saying that the, they hadn't had anyone attend the meetings that they set with the neighborhood participation program. Then they said we haven't had, um, we were not given proper notice about HOA meetings. 
when we postponed this the first time mm -hmm. it was with the agreement it seemed and if you all can tell me if you don't remember it this way but when the new president came and spoke they seemed amenable to the idea of sitting down with Miss Latin and actually having a conversation and coming to some compromise that would work for everyone and then the next thing that happens is we're being introduced to their attorney so um, Mr. Latier, if you would tell me what our jurisdiction is over an HOA. I know that we don't have any authority to, um, or the council doesn't have any authority to look at the bylaws. You only have to go by the charter and state law. That's the gist of it. Well, to me, there might be something here, but it's probably more appropriate for it to go to court, court. than for us to, to That's handle right. it. That's and correct. so based on the rules that we have in the UDC, that the only reason that the special use had to be considered was because of the proximity of the next Airbnb, I think that we should go ahead and uphold what the ZBA said and let Ms. Latin have her Airbnb, and if anything else has to happen, it's out of our hands. What's the proximity? I think, it's, I think that the rule is like 100 feet. It might be 500 feet, I can't remember. Mr. Clark could tell us. Was that 500? Is it 500? Yes, it's 500 feet. Okay, so the other one is 500 feet away. Thank you. Correct. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can hear from Mr. Clark briefly? I'd like to ask him. Mr. Clark. Clark, Mr. Westmoreland makes the point that this is a, an issue that's going to repeat itself in the future in that many homeowners associations have covenants which restrict use of property re to residential use only. Uh, and have, have we encountered that in the past and how do you think we should deal with this? This is the first appeal that we've had uh, in relationship and like uh, Councilwoman Fuller so elo eloquently stated, uh, if this uh, had not been within 500 feet of another air, uh, short term rental, uh, you, we wouldn't be here and you would not be having taken any actions in reference to this. Uh, we had a long term discussion this morning. We are studying uh, and gathering all the information that we can with short term rentals. We are proposing and preparing to doing the master plan section uh, at your next meeting, uh, do a presentation to the council in reference to the progress that we've made with short-term rentals. But answering your question, uh, we're having no problems with uh, short-term rentals. Uh, we have gone live with registration. Uh, we have approximately 190 short-term rentals in the city of Shreveport. We have 80 that uh, have been registered. Everyone is cooperating in a uh, very cooperative manner because we went through the long-term process uh, of having meetings and reaching out to all of the elements that would be uh, affected by short-term rentals uh, and I was really not excited about short-term rentals initially but the staff has been able to uh, educate me to the realization that they're they're uh, uh, enjoyable use and for some reason Shreveport is a prime location for short-term rentals. Well, I, I'll make a couple of comments. Uh, one is that the, the question that the UDC doesn't explicitly resolve is should the council be looking at the covenants and restrictions of homeowners associations to decide whether to grant these special use permits? It certainly doesn't contemplate that we do that. Mr. Latier is the city attorney and he's advised us that we shouldn't do that uh, and so my inclination is to defer to his advice uh, but I'll also say that even if we grant a special use permit if the covenants prohibit 
short-term rental use, our decision doesn't help the folks who want to have an Airbnb. They will be free to go to district court and enforce those covenants. And uh, based on the Second Circuit case that Mr. Westmoreland has cited to us, I think they may very well win. So I, I hope that the outcome of this is that the uh, everybody who owns property in this town uh, house development can get together and work something out rather than have a very expensive and protected lawsuit in district court. Thank you. I I'd just like to say also, Councilman Nicholson, uh, in 28 years, historically, we have never enforced neighborhood covenants. Uh, we've been advised by legal uh, throughout the years that uh, we have no jurisdiction. Those are agreements between property owners and uh, whether or not uh, they are in conflict with our ordinance, we are only responsible for the enforcement of our ordinance. Well, I guess if I want to be a judge, I might run for that office, Mr. Clark. That's not today. Well, I'll say this. It would be, this is one of those gaps where if the gap didn't exist, we wouldn't have a case-by-case -case basis. So it might be time to go back and figure out how to tighten that up so that we don't have to interpret things like this that put a special use in front of us to where one neighbor, because they got there first, gets to do something the next neighbor can't do. Right. Really no different than with the liquor stores. I won't get into that, but I agree with you. Uh, and uh, you this, is why, <laughs> this is why I asked uh, Adam Bailey from Community Planning to come with me, just so he could hear the concerns of the council. So as we go back and review uh, the existing ordinance, if changes are necessitated, or if tightening up is required, we will do those things. Thank you. Jack, did you have um, yeah, uh, I agree with Councilwoman Fuller. Uh, on the reason we're here was because of the close, close proximity it is to another Airbnb. So I think we should just focus on on that portion of the special use. Um, anything else that falls outside of our guidelines or purview um, should be handled in a, another venue. And we're trying to we're trying to and and, and I'll, I'll leave. We're trying to prevent uh, in any use like this any clustering. Uh, we didn't want a whole lot of uh, short-term rentals in one particular location in too close proximity to others. And that's why we uh, made this recommendation that uh, if, if a Airbnb or short-term rentals within 500 feet of another, it would require the special exception use, which would require a public hearing and go through the vetting of, of the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you, sir. Are there any other questions or comments? If not, let's vote. Y'all didn't talk so long. I forgot what we voted for. Motion carries with six and one out. Thank you. Are there any other appeals, Madam Clerk? There are none, Mr. Chair. Are there reports from the officers, boards, or committees? Madam Clerk, is there a clerk report? Uh, nothing new to add to the report from yesterday. Mayor Perkins, do you have any additional comments, Mr. Chair? Uh, Mayor had to step out. Uh, no, no additional comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, does any council member have any additional comments? Oh, I just want to say congratulations one more time to the mayor for that $22 million grant. Senator Cassidy might have tried to scoop it, but we know who did all the real legwork in D.C. to make it happen. It was him and De Niro. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, there are no executive sessions. Uh, is there, if there's nothing else, this time we will adjourn. I have a motion. Nothing else? We adjourn.